For traders that have emailed and asked, the links for the free downloads are in the description box below. Just click on the link or copy and paste and put that in your browser. The four-step method to high performance trading and the seven-step daily routine for high performance traders create the rituals, the mindset, and the winning attitude to master the markets. Bulletproof yourself with your daily routine and your habits. Force yourself to be getting better, 1% better every single day. How good can you get, traders? Again, the free downloads, the links are down below. They're both free courses. Let's get started. Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Today, we're going to do a short video. The format, I'll, I'll try and shorten these videos and keep them to seven to eight minutes so that people can digest things a bit easier. We're going to be talking about day one, Monday, and how the ranges and consolidations evolve the three day counts. We're going to build this, but Critical, I received a, just a, an immense amount of emails over the weekend and, and questions and comments and um, just been sort of enjoying the weekend and football and my kids' sport and beautiful weather here in Canada and came back to a ton of emails and questions, some great content and I will start over from a very basic perspective. My, my experience in trading has evolved over time. But some of the biggest impacts have come from Peter Brandt, and I mentioned his name over and over again, understanding classical charting principles. I talk about Peter's book, Trading Commodity Futures with Classical Chart Patterns, his other book, Diary of a Professional Commodity Trader, Schaubacher, Technical Analysis and Stock Market Profits. The original, what, what Peter Brandt also refers to as the real Bible of technical analysis, the original Bible of classical chart pattern analysis, and also technical analysis of stock trends. Edwards and McGee and Peter specifically recommends getting the sixth edition or older, not later than that, for very specific reasons. Now, the reason I... I focus on that and Peter does not day trade he trades weekly monthly charts and these larger consolidations are where big moves come from now you've heard me talk about the day count we've talked about the different templates within each day and when the week evolves traders are chasing the, the retail traders chase these little minute movements in the market and and are chasing pips Peter uh, has always said that he's traded, you know, uh, for over 40 years. And he talks about how two or three huge trades are where he makes the bulk of his money every year. Now, the turtles were very similar. They traded, you know, the breaks of 20 day highs, that sort of situation. And when they were in large moves, they also knew how they would pyramid into these trades as, as they continue to move. But those were geometrical range expansions. And so when I look at the charts and we talk about the day count specifically, just coming back to the three things that markets do, they break out, they pull back and they trend. They break out, they pull back and they reverse the false break, the failure. Or they trade back and forth in a trading range from high to low and low to high. Essentially, everything is fractal. So when we're dealing with Monday, in large majority of cases, Monday is setting the initial high and low. I hear traders say all the time, oh, I don't trade Mondays, I don't trade Fridays. Um, and that's understandable for very good reasons because uh, Monday can tend to be a low volatility day. There can be opportunities, and we're going to talk about that in a second. It's important to understand, and I mention this over and over again. Monday is the beginning of the week for me, no matter what's happened the previous week. Monday's day one. And what that means is you can come to the market fresh. And, you know, I had people tell me, oh, I don't take anything unless the four hour, the one hour, the 15 minute, you know, the five minute the weekly, the daily all line up. Well, that's not my style. This is not what I'm looking for. There are session trades and there are larger five-star opportunities that are high of the week, low of the week opportunities. But it takes three days, maybe four days for a, for a consolidation to set up. And the large moves are what come out of these consolidations. And so when we have 
a geometric range. When the week starts, uh, we have a high and a low. And we have a previous week's high and a low. And traders are taking trades because a daily level is broken. But meanwhile, they're inside of a, a weekly range on a Monday. And they think because a level's broken that that's a trade. And, and we may already have come out of a reversal pattern. And this market is only now on day one establishing its range. And on day two, you've heard me talk about initial balance. We now may be in a range expansion or a continuation of a move on the front side after a false break on the previous week. We can get day three, three day setup, day one, day two, day three, where we've now taken out the highs of a previous week. Meanwhile, traders are trying to short this all the way up just because it's gone to a daily high or a low. So important to understand on Monday, when we start the week, we could be in a situation where Friday was trending down and Monday slowly all day goes back in the other direction. And I've had traders say, well, Monday were, was all long all day or longs are in the market. But meanwhile, the market is still down. But what happens on day two, they're trying to short this all day on day one or they're, or they're in long on, on day one. And it's all it's doing is establishing a high and a low. And on day two, they short it, and we still may be on a range expansion where we will not see this until Asia, London, and the U.S. are now trading. So instead of just worrying about that the market broke a high or low, understand, is there an actual trading setup? And in this particular case, if this market was to reverse and continue in the original direction, we have we could have on day one it could be the high of the month and we could get a break on a Monday day one for a high of the month opportunity on week three week three where we had week one week two week three they break out and we could have actually a large move happening on a Monday at the high or low of the week or a month so if we're inside of a weekly high and low and you're shorting or buying these highs and lows inside on day one, you have heard me say this repeatedly again, don't counter trend a day one market that is moving in one direction. They are now potentially establishing a high and a low for the week. Day two may expand the range or break the low and come back for three sessions of rise and continue the move down after building order flow through Asia, London, and New York. Three sessions of rise. The initial breakout still tells us the direction we may be headed, but they get the first mouse in early before building order flow and then giving a trading setup at the high of the day, low of the day, whatever direction that may be going. So what I'm trying to emphasize in this video is that Monday, sets the initial high and low of our week. We can still have opportunities in those sessions, but understand again what a day one setup looks like if you're going to be trading on a Monday. And the easiest way to do that is to go back and study your Mondays. We can go back and look at any week. The pink line separates my Friday from a Monday. So again, if we're targeting geometrical ranges, so again, if the high and low of a day and a week are geometrical boxes that could potentially offer us risk reward where there's a range expansion of 100%. So again, these are not Fibonacci's. If you want to change the numbers in your Fib properties, all I've done is change the numbers from Fibonacci to just 100%. 50% and 100% expansions of the range. That just gives me an idea of where a market can move to if indeed a trade setup happens. So again, understanding that traders have looked at this as a possible breakout for a range expansion of this consolidation, the low of the week from, fr from the previous week on a Monday, day two though on Tuesday. But this is all again, understand, 
the market has come down on Monday and continued down on Tuesday, triggers shorts into the market, but now we have expanded our range. We talked about initial balance. The initial balance is Monday, Tuesday, so initially Monday sets our high and our low. We may expand the range on a Tuesday. We expand the range on a Tuesday. Now we have a high low of the week, and in 80% of the cases roughly, one of those levels will tend to hold as an extreme for the week. We'll talk about, again, we'll, ex we'll expand on these in the coming videos, but today we're talking about Monday, understanding Mondays. So we have a Monday that stayed inside of the previous Friday and weeks high and low for the entire session. So again, traders, we talked about targeting trade setups that break outside of the range. On a Monday, we're inside. We're clearly on a reversal unidirectional market. So the gain, the bias in your session would be in line if you're trading this and you recognize this, your your bias if you're trading this on a Monday would be in line with the direction of this move. And again, identifying a session trade versus a market that is set up for a geometrical range expansion after a larger consolidation builds up. What is a larger consolidation? A larger consolidation typically will be at least three days or in some cases the entire high low of a week. So if we look at the week we see on the Canadian dollar, we see a geometrical range on Monday, Tuesday set for the week on the high of the month. We see a breakout that fails. And again, if you can't see this, go and look at your charts. I'm, I'm consolidating this down so that it can be easily identified. But we have a range, a breakout that fails. How do I know that it fails? Because it comes back inside. They try to break out again and look, notice the timing of that breakout at the end of the week on a Friday into the shorts that have shorted the false break. We now have a high and a low range still intact as we head into the new week. The break below the range, again, false break, session trade, Asia shorts, London longs, US shorts, news, explosive short squeeze, Back to the high of the day, three peaks. Tuesday then forms our new high inside, inside of our range. We have our initial balance. Then we have three pushes into the high and then a false break. These false break reversals, again, targeting a larger range, a larger range from high to low. That's asymmetrical risk reward. Asymmetrical risk reward is when we have targeting maybe a 15 pip stop for a 100 pip move. And this is on a currency. Maybe it's going to be on the S&P where you're risking 20, 25 for 250 or 500 pips. But these ranges, Monday, Tuesday, again, form our high and low. But it's important to recognize if we have already broken a weekly level, we come into the new week. We have a breakout of our range on the new Monday. Monday puts a low in place and proceeds to march up in three peaks. We had a high of the day trade on the Tuesday in the US session on the Canadian dollar. And again, this two day setup, we saw it last week on the S&P. It can happen on day three, any of these things. But understand that until we have a larger consolidation, it's not about chasing these little movements where people have moving averages moving in one direction. It's about letting a box of volume set up. And then as we continue lower, now we have a high and a low. They break the low. That tells us now that we're going lower. If we're going lower, day three. We now have shorts in the market two days in a row. Two days in a row. Shorts in at the break of Tuesday's low. Shorts in at the break of Wednesday's low. We had three levels of rise back into the breakout for the U.S. session trade. So each day builds a consolidation and a potential setup based on the template. We're going lower. Three levels of rise for the short trade back down. We then proceed 
to work back up into the high of the previous day at the end of the week. We take out all the lower highs on the Monday morning. And when we do that, think about when we trigger breakout traders in on a day one. I talk about on a day one, you have in a lot of cases the lower rate of possible success on a reversal trade because they are just establishing the range. They're establishing the high and the low. So if they start to grind forward in one direction and we have a high and a low of a week, we have the high of the previous Monday and we have the low of the Wednesday as our high and our low of the week. We're inside, but that break of those highs can now be a break in structure inside. And we talked about break in structures. We look for squeezes, V bottoms, A tops for reversal trades, explosive reversal trades. Day one forms a high, a higher high. Day two forms our low for the week. We have day one longs in the market. After the Fed, we have day two longs in the market. The break of that high gives us day three longs in the market that gave a sell high opportunity at the high of the week, the high of the day, U.S. Session New York Open for the false break reversal back inside of our high low right at the beginning of the Asian Session. Asian Session traders, reversal opportunity on the Friday, after three levels of rise, one, two, three, taking out the high of the week. <clears throat> so this differentiates different trades where people are just purely looking at the high and the low of the day versus scalable, reproducible trading setups and understanding the day count. When there's no level broken, I'm not counting anything. When I break a daily low inside, that's my break in structure. My day count doesn't change in the original direction of my moves. Now, for the people out there who don't like that, you don't have to do what I'm doing. This is how I approach the market. I'm looking for the larger geometrical range expansions targeting asymmetrical risk reward, meaning if I'm going to get into a trade, I want to be able to see a, an opportunity where it's going to go from one extreme all the way to the other because they have volume trapped. And then I'm going to determine, is this a five-star opportunity to put size into? Or is this going to be just a session trade where I'm going to take the trade, lock in the money, get off the screen? Or can this go for uh, just the session and then the next day recognizing we had payrolls on the market? If I'm looking for a first bounce trade, we had B, B of, uh, Bank of Canada, B, BOC, as well as non-farm payrolls. But if this market is already rolled over, I'm looking for a first bounce trade and we're targeting from the high of the week back to the low of the week. So when the, the Bank of Canada and we have non-farm payrolls at the same time on a Friday, but our thesis is the short trade, we're either going to position ourselves after the news or look for the first bounce opportunity into the New York session, whatever your trading plan establishes for you. I'm, I'm only painting the picture of where we have gone three levels of rise. We're working from a larger consolidation and understanding how Monday initially, all Monday does is starts our high and our low process off. This breaks the high of Friday, gets longs into the market, but all this has done now is established a high and a low as we start the new week. Day two gets shorts in the market. Do you, do you see the what they do, they trigger longs on one side. They trigger shorts on the other. Then they've established their high and their low. I'll just mark that off. This is one type of template. The Fed trades back down into that. We have rectangles of volume everywhere. They broke the high of our rectangle. They broke the high. We have a break in structure. We're looking for a V bottom. So for people who like to trade the Fed, if this was the type of setup, the first move obviously 
it stops, triggers breakouts, but we already had our break in structure, which gave us a bias that if they went down, our target may be low of the day, low of the week, back to the high of the day, high of the week, obviously on a smaller time frame. But Monday establishes our high and our low. So if we look at Monday, we have a high. We had a session opportunity in the London uh, London market. High day, the previous day's low or high had not been broken, but we had a high of the day opportunity. And we now have a high and a low as we head into our day two. At, at this stage, they haven't broken that. They've only traded down to it. And this starts off our week, our high and our low. Our consolidation begins down low at the low of the previous Friday's range and the low of the week. We had a market that's broken levels, but we're only just breaking the low of the week. And this level from the, from the again, three things markets do, this is either gonna be a trend opportunity, we're gonna have a day two reversal possibly, no idea, won't know until I come to the session. And as the day evolves, three sessions build up the consolidation. So often traders get in the market in the you know, first part of the day and they're chasing these micro movements when in fact the day itself becomes a larger consolidation within a template for a trade setup that can offer asymmetrical risk reward on the day itself. And if we get three days of buildup after the news, Fed, day one, day two, day three, reversal on day three, targeting, we have a false break, targeting the low of the week. That type of movement, offering over 100 pips, 200 pips in, in all fact, with possibly a 20 pip stop is a great 10 to 1 opportunity. So you can go and study your charts. We'll look at an example of a session trade on Aussie dollar and gold today, uh, oil as well. We have our high and our low of the week. So even going back to a previous week, understanding the three things that markets do. We had a market on the Monday. Again, the pink line establishes our Friday, Monday border. We had a high and a low of the week. They broke the low of the week on day one. So again, understanding a weekly level has been broken. They've got short traders in the market. Short traders that have shorted the break of the weekly low. Monday, Tuesday, Monday puts a high and a low of the week in place. And on day two, they reverse right off the bat in the Asian session at the low of the week. So again, understanding London, Asia, I want to look for opportunities if I was trading those at the breaks of weekly levels. And if I'm inside, I need to know that I'm trading inside of a weekly level. But there's our high and low established for the week. They went higher on day two. They expanded the range upwards. So initially our high on Monday was down low. They've expanded the range on day two and gone higher. That tells us that the market could still be working the high, day one, day two, day three. We've got longs in the market on day two. That's the first break of a daily high. They break it on day three for a US session, high of the day, short trade, right at the previous day's high at the New York Open. We talked about that trade last week. And then we had the Fed that went vertical for a third push and a break of a previous Day's high, the day that shorted, that broke the inside bar day. Day one, day two, day three, inside bar day four, reversal on the Friday. Awesome trade. And then so when you start to understand the bigger consolidation and the breakouts, trends, etc., we see that the Fed was a false break reversal that came as a first red day. Somebody asked me about some of the other pairs. A first red day goes vertical first, same thing for green, goes vertical first before failing and closing down low. Now we're not, we haven't talked about the closes, the importance of closing price, but that is a first red day. All this volume above the closing price is trapped, is trapped. So when they have trap volume, that's an opportunity potentially if it sets up for a first red day trade which gave us that on the Thursday. A first red day gave us three peaks. It rolled over. We had the, the continuation move in the downward direction and then the short squeeze reversal heading into the Friday that went again all the way back. So coming back to our three things that markets do. We had a market that broke out and failed in reverse, but then we had our new weekly low. 
new weekly low and a weekly high. New weekly high, we start our day count. Day one, day two, day three reversal. False break, it came back inside in the Asian session. So again, three things markets do. When you understand that, our bias was long in the US session looking for the first bounce trade. First bounce gave us the entry just towards the end of the 50 minute candle, similar with the British pound, which was at the low of the month, the euro, uh, low, low of the week, I believe. So our bias is long, we need them to pin down first. That's our accelerated version with the news as a catalyst for our V bottom and our geometrical fractal rectangular breakout for a range expansion targeting back to the high of the week. So again, understanding we had a false break reversal and we had a three day setup. The consolidation got lower and lower. It failed our target then our target for astute traders who took the trade in the Asian session would be to hold on to this or to be holding on to a trailer with the bias being we're going back to the high of the week, a false break reversal that broke out of our initial range. So again, understanding Monday, Monday starts off establishing the high and the low for the week. We have a gap trade on oil this morning on Monday. Monday will typically be the only day I will look for a gap trade. We'll talk more about that later. But this again, this gap established our low of the day possibly. They traded back into our low. They broke out of the Asian consolidation and went higher without taking out a previous day's higher low. Again, break in structure, our thesis is V bottom. V bottom in London, they break the high again into the US open. I only trade oil in the US session, but our thesis would be an explosive move breaking the high of the week on the way out and obviously understanding that on the day one we've now broken the high of the week the high of the month and that this market could also fail on the breakout now this was at the New York open for an explosive continuation move on a day one you know you've heard me say this don't counter trend on a day one in the in that 12 candle window because they're establishing the range and that range expansion may not come back or may not trade back like it will on a day two or a day three setup. We've currently gone higher. We have now again a day, a breakout from Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, a geometrical range expansion on oil. High and low, they've done one full expansion of that range. And we have a high of the week triggered. Tomorrow we will have a high and a low. And day two will either break one of those levels or go back up to that level or break down inside and possibly start a reversal back through towards the low of Monday and expand the range on the downside. No idea. But Monday is important to understand that sets the initial high and low for the week. Thanks traders. Hopefully you got value from today's video. We'll be adding another short video talking about the initial bounce next. Thank you. Have a great day and may the markets go with you.